Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network SoCal Sweat. My name is Ann McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Meow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals. And let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. This is your host, Ann McDaniels of SoCal Sweat. The diet and lifestyle of most Asian countries attributes to longevity and overall health. What are the secrets? And how can we incorporate them into our own culture through Asian cuisine, where food is considered medicine? This episode features Diane Yang Kirk, the Rachel Ray of healthy Asian cooking, according to Steve Lim of The Dental Diet. Diane will speak on the multiple benefits of cooking Asian cuisine, as we also refer to her Hoya cooking channel. Hoya stands for healthy, organic, inspired Asian. And as we're cooking at home more frequently, Hoya will offer a multitude of healthy and delicious meals and cocktails. Since Diane is also an accomplished actress, the cooking videos she produces and shoots offer a higher level of excitement. I now introduce you to Diane Yang Kirk of Hoya, her healthy, organic inspired Asian cooking food show. And today we have Miss Diane Yang Kirk of the Hoya Food and Cooking Channel. Hoya stands for Healthy Organic Inspired Asian, Asian and I will not do the official Hoya until I hear it from Diane herself. Can you give me a Hoya, Diane? Hoya! Woohoo! <laughs> now it's official. Now, yes. she, what a cool play on words. You've got the Hoya, almost like a karate or chopping, chopping method for the cuisine. What a great idea to come up with. And it's a beautiful cooking channel. I mean, the presentations, the colors, your humor, your cats show up, guest speakers <laughs> show up. It's just a really fun channel to watch. Um, this was a natural fit for you because you were the oldest of three siblings and you had two working parents and you prepared a lot of the meals at home and you learned healthy cooking and nutrition from your mother. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I actually just want to tell a really funny story about the origin of the name, if you don't mind. Yeah, Anthony, please do. Of Hoya. So originally, um, when thinking about sharing this kind of information and sharing my, uh, my love for cooking and the information that I know about healthy Asian cooking, I wanted something catchy, but something that also meant something. And so I started talking about the adjectives of, of what my uh, what I'm presenting, which is healthy food, Asian inspired, because it's not just traditional Asian food per se. And, uh, and, and so there you have H-O-I-A. And I just work the, uh, work the letters around. And I have this word that wasn't a real word, but it sounded like Hoya. And then therefore, it's that kind of the play on the karate and stuff. So um, that was a very happy accident. <laughs> no, it, it works. It works out perfectly, and it's very catchy. And um, I've I've been so, so. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say. So uh, my background when it comes to food and cooking, my mother is a nurse, and so she would always come home and say, "You need to take these supplements. You need to eat this. So you don't do not need to eat that. These are so these are fats that you should have. These are not and and everything. And of course, over time as uh, new information comes out, some of that information changes. Um, I was immersed in, in that and being aware that it does make a difference. And also uh, being, like you had said, the oldest of three and having parents who were not always home when we got home from school, I would rummage around my cupboards in the pantry and say, what can I create here? And in my home, there was always a mix of American foods and Asian ingredients, a lot of which were in bags and tins and uh, cans that I had no idea what they were, but I would experiment or um, I would get help from my parents when they were around. <laughs> no, that's amazing. And so therefore you were al you already were doing like almost like your take on chopped, like let's put these things, things together and see if it works. And 
I mean, were your brothers, were your, were your brother and sister always loving, loving the cuisine? Were they pretty honest with you when you were little? I don't really think they had much choice in the matter. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> if it was food around, there was, there was going to be food. But I think um, I, it, I've always been a really creative person, whether it is dance or art or uh, just various acts or music even um, of that. So I think this is just like another place for me to play. But that really started to develop when I was in college and I went to college at NYU, which is in New York City. And in New York City, it's known as one of the most uh, amazing culinary cities. So I got to experience the best of the best because I had a boyfriend who liked to take me to fancy restaurants. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is what this is like. And on a college student's budget, which is basically no budget, if I wanted that again, I needed to um try to create it myself and I was also it was the first time in my life I had cable so I was addicted to the food network <laughs> so sure. when I was doing my homework and studying that was playing on 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 the on the tv uh next to me so it just kind of all it, it all it, it became a bigger influence in my life than I ever would have imagined then sure it's amazing who you date and what you're exposed to early and and you had cable so you were able to watch that. Now you were also put on a lot of dinner parties and things like that for your friends. And you were always known for what comes today as the Rachel Ray of healthy Asian cooking. And <laughs> they raved about your presentations. I put some of the quotes in the, in the bio, but it's already sounds, and this is such a natural fit for you besides that, because you are an actress, you are a producer and you're just damn creative. So this is just oh, a, thank a you. wonderful leeway. But um, Diane, did you did you, when your mother came home and she talked to you about, you know, certain, certain medicine, did she teach you Chinese medicine, like some of the herbs and what they were known for? Or was it mostly just the westernized um, supplements when you, when you said supplements? It was definitely a mix of both. Um, I think as a kid, you were in my family, my mom was boss. So whatever she gave me, whether I liked it or not, it went in my mouth and I had to take it. A lot of the uh, Western herbs and uh, potions, so to speak, were not very uh, nice tasting. <laughs> so I remember not liking that a whole lot. But um, as I got older, I really started to do my own research and discover that food essentially is medicine and medicine is food. And because of that, I really started to delve more into important ingredients, both from the taste side and the flavor side and the creative uh, combinations that you can create, but also their health benefits. Because if you know that, then you're more inclined to use them and play with them and be creative with them. Absolutely. And we'll get into some of those ingredients later and the health benefits and the beauty benefits. But something that I want to run by you, and just from my own research and just being exposed to, you know, a lot of friends and from Asian countries, there are a few things that so, differ so tremendously from the Eastern and the Western cuisine culture and exercise culture. These are the things that I've picked up on. And tell me what your thoughts. In America, we go to the restaurants, we order soft drinks, lemonades, alcohol. For the most part, I mean, even particularly with Japan, the following seems to apply, like they order green tea and water. So already you're cleansing your system, you're making yourself full, so portion control. The kids, and I found this fascinating, the kids in Japan are educated in nutrition early in elementary school. They also are taught to brush their teeth after a meal. They learn to prepare meals as children, and then they serve, they serve the other kids and they do the cleanup, which I already is like almost ceremonial and appreciating food and already being exposed to proper nutrition, which I, if America could incorporate that, that would be incredible. Um, also, portion control and slowing down with number one, the, the chopsticks that is slowly into the mouth and it's harder to, harder to chew. Plus, there's portion controls in multiple bowls or like, you know, those misto boxes, things like that. Also, I have found that Meals are very important sitting down with family and friends in Asian cultures versus, uh, you know, a lot of Americans just at the counter. We, we you know, do it in our car. We eat in front of the TV or in front of our computer, which, again, adds more, like, forget about portion control. We don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. And it's also ceremonial. You, you, 
you care about your food, you sit down and it's meaningful. So it, it just, it's, it's a little bit higher quality. And then of course, not a lot of snacking. There's no need for snacking. There seems to be three square meals a day um, and just very, very natural ingredients. And also a lot of these countries are a lot more active. So a lot of kids ride their bikes to school. And in America, we don't really have a lot of these safe cities for kids to do that. So there's less, there's more sedentary. And I would be curious to know if kids play video games as much as they do here in, in the Western culture. So were you brought up on, on any of these things or most of them? Um, those are wonderful points and great questions and things to touch upon. And um, I grew up in, I was born and raised in New York. So I'm actually American. I am of Chinese descent. I'm Chinese 100% first generation. So I guess I can speak on my experience being a first generation Chinese American. Um, I don't really entirely know how um, children are, are taught in China, Japan, Korea, um, in, in the East, in those countries, either like when I was growing up, going back to um, those years and even now, but I do believe um, all across the world, the Western influence has, has really spread. Um, but what's also really nice about that is the Eastern influence has also spread into Western influence, which is, I mean, this is a perfect example of that. Um, green tea or tea in general, I remember watching my grandfather drinking tea all the time and he would have the loose leaf tea and he would be spitting the tea leaves onto, into a little bowl. I'm like, Ugh, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I never really understood it, but, uh, and then when I would go to restaurants or a, any kind of restaurants with my parents that, uh, served Asian food. My parents would ne would say, no, you cannot have soda. You can only have water or tea. So that was a rule that was instilled upon us. And as an adult, I have noticed when I drink tea with my foods that have a tendency to have more oil or grease in it, it actually calms my stomach. It preps your stomach just like having soup before, something warm before in your stomach um ahead of time and then um at the end of the meal to help with digestion so and one of those herbs that um is, that does actually help with with digestion is uh ginger which is in a lot of asian food and there's there's quite a bit of um ingredients that does help with digestion but it that just happens to be one of them so if you got an upset stomach stomach or if you're feeling nauseous ginger tea is great <laughs> sure. um but also i have found that anytime if i feel like i had a, a meal that's a little bit too greasy drinking hot water or hot beverage hot tea um afterwards really settles my stomach it's that kind of like weird queasy mm, not mm -hmm. so good stomach uh feeling and that definitely helps and um if you think about it, if you're drinking cold beverages, if you're having sodas along with your with your meal, and if it oils and it's coagulating in your stomach, that could be a very good reason why you, your stomach hurts. <laughs> Absolutely. Besides the extra calories, I mean, you add 110 for a soda or, or even up to 150 for a lemonade. So that's just another another good issue with that. I've also read that a lot of Asian countries use, use a soup as the dessert. When you said, I, I've seen a sweet potato ginger I've seen a black bean, and that also aids in digestion. So it's, it's a really um, great thing to have. Um, unfortunately, so, many of our, so much of our culture here has turned Asian food into a, a not, you know, not it's very, very tasty, but the ad additive of MSG. And you happen to be allergic to MSG, so you wouldn't use it anyway. Well, that certainly worked in your favor. <laughs> yes. So uh, this monosodium glutamate, which is what uh, MSG stands for additive or flavor enhancer, uh, became a word that was used a lot in my home because of my allergic reaction. And some people can have life threatening reactions. And for me, luckily, or not, maybe not luckily, I just would get a rash on my face and I would itch and it would be uncomfortable and I'd get little bumps. And it's, it's just, you know, we, we didn't know where it came from. And uh, being a, a child actress, when I would go to auditions, my mom, when I would either, when I would book something, we would celebrate, she would take us out to eat, and I would have some foods with 
this uh, with MSG in it. We didn't know. And then come shoot day, I would have some little bumpies on my face and we never knew what it was until we finally figured it out. Um, and so because of that, then we had to be really careful about what I ate. And that's when I became an ingredient reader at maybe seven years old <laughs> I sure. would say, in the grocery store. Mom, look, we can have this because it doesn't say monosodium glutamate. And then she would point out other ingredients as to why I can't have it also. <laughs> well, you were already um, educating yourself because of that. And I'm glad you weren't anaphylactic or anything like that, like some of these horrible allergies. But yeah, as we know, yeah, going be... on camera, you can't have you can't have marks. So that helped you to now in your acting career. I'm sure. For sure. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think the, the common misconception about MSG is that it is not only in Asian food and there is natural forming MSG, but uh, the chemical form is really cheap. It, it creates a, um, it, and it enhances the flavor of what you're already having, which then creates kind of like an addictive property. As a so dietary, yep. In right, and and in our consumerism economy, or you know, where they want you to consume more and more and more, that helps the bottom line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, it's just very simple like that, and it makes you crave it and and want more. So uh, I, as a very young child, realized that it was in a lot of the canned soups and as flavoring on potato chips and in and, and dips and just different things. And that's also one of the reasons why I started needing to create my own and why as a young youngster or um, in my middle school and high school years, I really started experience, experimenting with American spices, classically known American spices to create some of the flavors for the foods that it's not that I couldn't eat, but I really was not allowed to. Sure. No, it's already <laughs> doing swap always, outs. You always still want what you want, but that really helped me to understand flavor. Sure. And how to create it myself. And your food is delicious. And Thank a, you. <laughs> a couple of things that I want to just go over. Um, Asian, Asian cuisine, we talk about fermented ingredients and some people just don't really know what that means fermented, but that's a probiotic in your stomach that already aids in digestion, which helps, helps weight loss control, helps constipation, everything. So like the following, I'm sure you, you've used a lot of kimchi, miso, tempeh, soy sauce, and kombucha. And I think your, your husband also had a little kombucha line, didn't he? For, yeah, for a while? he did. And that's so high maintenance. It, it actually isn't entirely. And we enjoy kombucha at home. And now that I basically enjoy a keto diet. Um, and that's, we'll get into this later, but um, he's, uh, or I've, I've guided him in making a uh, keto friendly kombucha. Oh, so sure. without actual sugar, I know it's kind wow. of crazy, but yeah, we get to enjoy kombucha all the time. That could be a uh, whole new home. line and, and business for you guys. <laughs> that's, an, of course you're doing that. And on that, I was going to ask you, so Diane has a husband who is um, an Australian actor. Kirk and um, uh, excuse me, Reese, Reese Kirk, and um, I'm wondering if you ever use like Vegemite, an Australian dish or as an Australian you know ingredient into the Asian cooking. Have you done any kind of a crossover? Yeah, <laughs> I haven't, but I should maybe consider that because that would make him really happy. It's not that I don't like Vegemite, but it's I'm not the fan, but. I could maybe turn it into uh, something that I like, but it's it's basically a, a yeast. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's um, it, it tastes like vitamin B. If you've ever had like a chewable vitamin B or a, a yeast tablet, um, that's what it tastes like. That's what it is. Oh, like nutritional um, yeast, maybe that kind of taste. Uh, um, I don't. Know. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Maybe it could uh, be stir fried. Actually, I think it. I think it could go well into uh, a sauce that sure. will that you can uh, thin out into a gravy, which I, I, I'm going to put that on my list too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and on that, I noticed that one of your goals is to have your own line of sauces. So this could be a, a, a Reese Kirk, Diane Yang Kirk immersion of the countries <laughs> of the, of the Vegemite with the Asian. I don't know. Could be a sauce. Yeah. So it would sure. <laughs> be kind of fun. And I, I was just curious about that. Reese is also an actor and they're they're a wonderful couple and they 
they're always so business and forward thinking and, and um, I love watching them, watching their success. And also, oh, thank you. of course, and besides that, a lot of Asian medicinal ingredients are used in cuisine. Um, for example, cinnamon, turmeric, chili, coriander, and ginger. And like, just like you said, these have medicinal benefits and beauty benefits. I mean, you've always had beautiful skin. And I mean, a lot of these really aid in, in skin repair, anti-aging. And that's another thing that Asian cuisine offers that maybe American diets lack a little bit. You know, sometimes we oversalt things as opposed to using more spice. But I think it's getting better. And if you watch the Hoya channel, you can get better at that as, a, as an American or a, in the Western Absolutely. culture. So, yeah, there's, um, there's so many really great benefits to some of the spices you mentioned. And I also wanted to mention collagen and uh, gelatin. I mean, I know that for those who are vegetarian or vegan, that may be not in your world. But um, just going back to the spices, um, basically everything that you mentioned there has uh, anti-inflammatory properties. So, you know, puffiness in your body uh, results in pain in your joints um it, it's you 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 hold water you, you there's um it, inflammation is is a result of your body fighting something that it's not happy with so mm -hmm. if there's anything you can do to uh, alleviate that that's great um there's heart benefits there's benefits towards uh preventing or hindering diabetes perhaps weight management increasing your metabolism so um, while you're getting your tasties on, you're giving your body some good stuff. <laughs> you absolutely are. And I also noticed that the Asian diet does not have a lot of dairy products like the Western diet. And talk about inflammation, it's dairy. And people have, yeah. I mean, even like hormonal acne is caused from a lot of this and the bloat. Like if I, if I have a shoot, you can bet I'm cutting down on dairy because that just coats <laughs> It adds a layer above the muscle, I think. And a lot of mm -hmm. singers even do or ward off milk before they have a performance because it kind of coats the throat. So I think that is also a big, a big difference in there's not as many cheeses and, and milk products and yogurts. And if you guys, if, if there are a lot of yogurts in the Asian diet, it's perhaps the Greek yogurt or just very, you know, the plain. So not as much flavoring. Perhaps. Yeah, you know, when um, thinking about that, uh, I don't know, I can't say exactly why maybe why cow's milk or sheep's milk wasn't prevalent in the diet, but um, I guess this is slightly moving on to another topic, the use of a lot more vegetables and stir fry and less meat, I guess, in proportion in, in meals versus the American diet, where you have a big slab of steak and another big dollop of mashed potatoes <laughs> and uh, some bread on the side and maybe two pieces of broccoli <laughs> exactly um, so the but the uh going back to the milk uh it juries out about soy i guess th there's there's different camps about soy uh i know that um asian in asian culture soy is used a lot and you know, I'm I'm not an expert, so I can't really speak on that. But coconut milk is used also. Um, yeah, I, but as an American who grew up drinking milk, I don't really drink milk as an adult anymore. It does upset my stomach, and um, mm -hmm. I notice that unless it, if I have to have any, unless it's organic, I I do have reactions in my skin and and all that. But that's my personal experience. Mm -hmm. Um, there's always almond milks too, or or coconut or anything else to try for people. Yeah, but yes, I'm I, I'm a big fan of almond milk. I love yeah, it. <laughs> it's delicious. I mean, you can't go wrong. The chocolate is just like insane. Um, <laughs> you also, and I love, like for for the fall season, you have a wonderful um, a wonderful show, and it's it's there's a pumpkin. You make up a, a pumpkin, and let me just double check on the actual name of that you had made a healthy organic pumpkin and chicken masaman curry. And what a great mm -hmm. fall dish. And I think there's mm -hmm. so, when you talk about, you know, putting an American diet with, with the Asian diet, what, what a creative, and this is such a cute video because you dress up, you look like a witch, you've got the black <laughs> lips, you do the, do the little, um, and, and this again lends to Diane being a great actress and producer and coming up with all these things. And I can imagine Reese is holding the, 
holding the light and making fun of you in the background. And it's, it's, it's really cute, but that looks absolutely delicious for the fall season. Thank you. That was a really fun episode to do. Um, I had uh, one of my fangs fall out. Oh, that was okay. <laughs> the introduction and we have many outtakes of that and that was just really funny this uh, the fangs that I had for uh, it was Diane Fang Kirk that episode yes <laughs> that uh my fang wouldn't stay in my mouth while I was trying to do my introduction oh that's funny uh, that's the whole thing yeah, I mean you make I, it fun you make it less intimidating and we even get like you know roles from your cats your cats will make an appearance and, and <laughs> well I, I do shoot at home and everything that I do show on my show, I like to think that unless you are in um, a very rural, er rural area where you don't have access to um, some of the more ethnic ingredients, but hey, there's always Amazon, there's um, online shops that you can purchase from. Um, so things are, it's a lot easier, but I like to think that everything that I show you should be able to make at home or at least something very similar and close and i also give a lot of substitutions and options for example if you like less spicy or if you for some reason are a vegetarian or if you prefer to use uh mushrooms instead of uh ground chicken sure. those are all uh options that i show on my um on my episodes which I think is really great because I understand that my my videos who the audience I think really are and it's not to say not, not for not not for um non-Asians but for people who feel a little bit more intimidated and even I I've even had some comments tell me that wow this is really complicated but that's just how Asian food is prepared so I definitely have some tips when it comes to cooking and preparing, which if we get to it, we, I can share with you. But um, I really wanted to make it friendly to the Western um, audience. And therefore, for example, that episode, because of Halloween and um, Halloween is such a fun um, holiday to mm -hmm. be able to kind of blend the two together sure and with the holiday coming up uh i did do an episode with cocktails and i am also i've been for a very long time a bartender so um yeah some really great uh if, if okay why don't we say this if you want to make a holiday cocktail which blends east and west um how about a fuji apple cinnamon pie sake martini <laughs> oh that sounds <laughs> that delicious and I love I love that episode where, where you bring in your bartender friend and these were yeah. such beautiful cocktails so you make it so fun because Asian food is extremely intimidating that's why it gets that's and even in these restaurants it's just so glorious and if someone can master that it's it's a huge honor um but you do make it fun and you make it friendly and when you add the alcohol version well hey you can get those college students, but anybody who is, you know, concerned about their weight, you definitely offer MSG free, healthy oils, vegetable, he vegetable, heavy, low sugar. You offer vegetarian options, vegan options, gluten free and dairy free. And like you said, you're doing the keto diet. So you can already, mm -hmm. and sometimes people will be like, Oh, keto. Yeah. But Asian food has rice in it. Well, you don't have to eat just the rice. There's many other things, but if someone were to do a lower, a healthier version of rice. Would you recommend brown over jasmine or or black rice? And that can be an intimidating um, carbohydrate to use within the preparation um, versus a white rice. What is your favorite go-to on that? Well, if you're keto, on, on specifically on a keto diet, any kind of rice is going to put you over your daily carb intake limit. So um, let's just put that aside for the moment. Brown rice. Uh, the the outside basically the difference between brown rice and white rice is there's the outside um, there's an outside protective layer on the brown rice which has some more nutrients and ingredients but 
when it comes to the carbohydrate profile, it's about the same. But if you're going to have rice and you want something that's a little bit healthier, or at least you can get a little bit more from bite per bite, then I definitely do recommend brown rice and also black rice, which I do have in a number of my episodes. If you scroll through and look at the pictures, if you see uh, something black or purple on a picture, I noticed that. And it's, and it's beautiful. Rice. The presentation is gorgeous. I love black rice for that reason. But why is it more difficult than the other rices to prepare? Um, it's, if you know the trick, then it's not necessarily more difficult. Um, usually when you're making white rice, the proportion of water or liquid is one to one. So if you're using one cup of rice, you're going to, uh, cook the rice with one cup of water. And the difference with black rice, which is sometimes also known as forbidden rice or brown rice is you need to add a little bit more water. So that way it can absorb into the rice and then you're not going to get something that's really grainy and and hard to chew and Mm -hmm. um not good but you also can't put too much because then you end up with sloppy mushy soggy (laughs) slimy (laughs) yeah and that doesn't bind well if you're going to do something like sushi or something like that well with sushi um in sushi rice you do add a little bit of rice wine vinegar and um some salt and some sweet ingredients so that itself creates um uh, some moisture in the rice, which helps bind um, when you're when you're rolling sushi uh, rolls or you're using for using rice for that kind of purpose. Sure. Well, so you bring up this tip, and I also like your tip of, for example, replacing liquid aminos for MSG. Um, what other tips can you share if someone were to just be starting out and like you know just basic tips and tricks? Um, and also, I'd love to know. What type of dinnerware or what type of preparation? Like, would you need a wok? Would you need a steam, a rice steamer? What are some things that that a very basic beginner could buy um, just to start off? And and if they get intimidated, what are some tips to keep in mind? Uh, I love this question. And oh my gosh, I got so many tips. (laughs) This will be hard to keep concise. Um, First of all, um, just kind of finishing off on the keto um, topic when it comes to rice. Cauliflower rice is popular um, as a replacement for rice because of uh, that, the carbohydrate profile. I got to admit, it's not as tasty as white rice, but you can still enjoy the beautiful stir fries or the beautiful uh, other ingredients and, and pair it with the cauliflower rice. So that's one. Another great option that I really like to um, enjoy the flavors and the ingredients of Asian food without rice or noodles is, believe it or not, lettuce. So I will essentially make myself a Chinese stir fry over lettuce. And um, it, it allows me to have the flavor that I want. I'm not getting the texture and the consistency of rice, but um, I believe my body thanks me for it. <laughs> when I have too many carbs, as I'm realizing the difference, um, especially in in um, in eating and choosing my lifestyle, my health, my healthy lifestyle to be uh, keto based, is I have more general energy and I don't crash from carbohydrates. But you know, when I used to eat a lot more carbs in general, I never noticed the difference. But once I really changed my way of 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 eating i did notice a difference and for me i prefer that um so uh when it comes to your kitchen and cooking i think the first thing to remember is don't be intimidated have fun if you're getting in the kitchen uh and you're doing it with love whether it's just for yourself or if it's for your family Hopefully everyone will enjoy it, but also have a sense of humor about it because you tried <laughs> and you, exactly. you got food and it, and it, it goes in and it ends up the same way coming out. So <laughs> you know, you're, okay. you're okay. Any which way. Um, it is really important to, um, especially when it comes to preparing Asian foods is to do all the chopping, prepping. And if you're, again, if you're more of a beginner cook, to measure out your sauces and your your mixes ahead of time because when you are especially when it comes to stir frying everything goes in really quickly otherwise you end up with either overcooked meat which is really chewy and it doesn't taste good or you end up with soggy vegetables which doesn't taste good either so um 
having everything ready. Uh, by the way, if you have somebody else in the household who will do the dishes for you afterwards, then that's a bonus because in prepping with different ramekins and having little bowls of, of the mushrooms, of the onions, of the ginger, of the garlic, of all the different ingredients, somebody's got to that, uh, that's washing up afterwards. Sure. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend um, doing all of the prep ahead of time and then giving yourself that break because I think in, in and I cook all, I cook all different kinds of cuisines. Um, I can do a lot of prep along the, along the way while I'm cooking uh, more Western based meals because while say my chicken is poaching or my, my fish is in the pan, I'm, I'm working on other things. Sure. Um, in Asian food, once again, everything kind of goes in the pan really fast and you're cooking it on high heat and then you pull it off and bam, it's ready to go and it's straight onto the table. And of course it's best enjoyed when it's super hot. That's a great um, tip, the mise en place process because we can get yeah. lazy and you're right. And in, in would that be in a wok? I mean, do you, could you, uh, is it, how important is having a wok for stir fry in some of these, some of these dishes? So on my show, I intentionally did not use a wok because I didn't want people to feel like they had to go out to buy a wok in sure. order to enjoy Asian food at home. I like using a wok when I cook sometimes if I'm making larger portions. Uh, I like to save time. I'm all about efficiency in order to get everything that I need to get done, done. So to, to shop, wash, chop, prep, cook, for more than just myself and my husband in one meal. I like to have at least two or three meals of leftovers afterwards. So when you have a smaller pan, sometimes you can't fit everything in or you might have to do it in batches, which is totally okay. But when you have a wok, you have a lot more um, surface area, I guess, in order to, to cook and, and, and to, to do that when it comes to stir frying. Also, when it comes to stir frying, um, and this is just a tip that I picked up growing up from my parents. If you are stir frying meat, you start with that first on a hot pan and then you pull the meat out. So that way the meat stops cooking or at least it finishes cooking and then you do the vegetables next. And if you're doing just vegetables or if you are doing the vegetables next, you go with the fragrant vegetables, uh, sometimes herbs first. So um, oftentimes or almost always garlic, onions, maybe ginger, uh, maybe some of the other spices first to, and when it hits some of the oil, which is in the pan, it really releases such a beautiful mouthwatering smell that, <laughs> you know, I'm, I, that, that penetrates the rest when you dump it in. Absolutely. And then afterwards, you always want to put the vegetables that are, are more, um, be it fibrous or crunchier to start yeah. as a raw vegetable first. Like a carrot. And then you add it. Yeah, like carrots or celery. Um, and then uh, later on, you want to add in some of the other mushrooms, which cook for a shorter amount of time. So you're kind of balancing out mm -hmm. where um, how much heat they're getting. And therefore, you end up with a dish that um, is all cooked and it's all, it, but the the amount of time that you're cooking the different ingredients all ends up still in the same pan but you you've controlled that in your that's cooking. a lot that's of okay. layering that takes experience a lot of experience because like even soups it's all about the layering process and like you said the fragrant vegetables first or the meat first followed by the fragrant vegetables and then you won't overcook mm -hmm. your meat um if you take it out so that's that's a great yeah. tip really yeah good tip. that i think um i do show with a, a few different stir fries for example, beef and broccoli, I do a chicken and string bean. Um, uh, there, there's a bunch, but you can really mix and match your ingredients. And, uh, I, and that's something that I really love when it comes to um, being able to shop for my own produce and, and meats and picking out my own ingredients because uh, not everything is always in season. And sometimes when I go to the store, I mean, I'm, I'm a deal finder. I like to to find I like to love that I got a great deal mm -hmm. and uh, on my on my produce and also take advantage of what's in season and what is freshest at the moment sure. so um being able to say like oh well you know today I'm going to go off of the chicken and string beans recipe per se but instead of string beans I'm going to use red and green peppers and onions instead and you really have 
it's the same dish, but you're, you're using slightly different ingredients. Sure. And, and it's still colorful, adding all those nutrients and, and, and the presentation is always beautiful. And I like that you also said, because I'm thinking about someone who is on a, on a budget with a big family. Let's just say it's a single parent and she's, she has four kids. I think like even when you're bringing up the wok, you could use a wok because it's, it's there, you can add a lot more and then you can package it for leftovers. I think that you could do it affordably if you went to a farmer's market and or bought a lot of rice and rice can be very affordable. Um, that could go a long way on a tight budget for somebody and they wouldn't necessarily have to be exposed to, to, the, to the Asian markets and all these intimidating spices and all these intimidating ingredients. They could just do it at their normal local grocery store and farmer's markets and prepare it to go a long way because I think right now during COVID and with this economy, people are mm -hmm. thinking more economically. and. Um, and it's it although this looks intimidating it really isn't and if you watch your channel and you can break it down and and it's really fun so in the you could get kids incorporated things like that so i really do like that how about any other yeah, tips I, you can share i yeah i love uh i actually <laughs> this is funny to say i enjoy grocery shopping more than i do clothes shopping <laughs> me too oh my god i go to the grocery store every single day and just from a marketing perspective, I love seeing the different products and what's out there. And when you say you're, you're on keto, oh my God, are there, like, I just saw a $13 box of bag of cereal for keto and it was like, it could fit in the palm of my hand. I mean, but people that don't want to prepare keto meals at home and do all the, all the grunt work, well, that's, that's an easy fix, but it's also $13. And if you look at the ingredients that isn't so kosher as far as all the keto you know they're just there's a lot of attitude right i think if you I, make it at home better yeah i always like to think from mother earth they you know mother earth gives you gifts and if you can cook close from uh farm to table as possible so farmers markets are great but for some people that is a little bit um a little bit pricier but i i do have to say um oftentimes organic or organic produce does have more flavor. Um, and if that's something that's really important to your values, then by all means, and if you can afford it, that's great. But I also don't want to encourage, I, I don't want people to feel discouraged who can't afford uh, going to, for example, a more expensive organic uh, store uh, where they really focus on on that. And, and by, by the way, some of these stores have a lot of packaged products, which not only how carry that heavy uh hefty price tag but uh, once again it's it's processed so if you can take something that's raw put it in your refrigerator or bring it home and cook it immediately and it goes right onto your dinner table i really think that 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 does make a difference i like to shop uh at uh i i live in los angeles and so i am close to some of the i like to call them more ethnic markets and so some of these more ethnic markets I got to say, compared to some of like the larger chain uh, markets that I do also shop at for some, some other, um, some of my grocery needs, there seems to be way more people buying produce. And so I know at some of these, and, and this is what I, I grew up doing um, or with my parents, and you wouldn't buy two oranges. You would buy a full entire bag of oranges. You'd come home with 12 oranges and then you would buy not just one or two little pieces of bok choy. You would buy an entire huge bag and, and, and it would essentially end up costing you the same as, uh, at an store. And again, I think it has to do with supply and demand. And also at some of these, um, more say ethnic markets, uh, because they're going, cycling through the produce because it's getting purchased and used more often, the prices are lower and you're also still getting really fresh ingredients. Um, I know that there are some people who are concerned about organic versus uh, not organic produce or, or meats and, and, and eggs, but uh, when it comes to produce, I'm sure you can, you guys can look this up. I don't need to go through the list, but there's the dirty dozen and yes. then the, uh, the fresh 15. Mm -hmm. um, is that what it's called, the Fresh 15? The, yeah, but I, I definitely the clean, know, clean 15, sorry. Yeah, clean I definitely 15. know the Dirty Dozen, though. Yeah, it's the Dirty Dozen. And um, if you, if, for example, I know strawberries is one of the top on the Dirty Dozen. So if you can at all possible have uh, organ buy organic strawberries and, and have those, that's great. But you, if you can't afford it, a really great trick is to use 
diluted white vinegar. So white vinegar, which is very inexpensive, you can buy it um, in, in a gallon jug or even larger if you're at, if you have say like a Costco membership, mix butter, it will pull all the pesticides off. Without um, compromising the taste? Outside. Well, the taste comes from, no, and you won't taste the vinegar at all. Okay. Give it a rinse after with water. Um, but uh, the taste of the way the fruit or vegetable was uh, grown, that's what's going to be the most, uh, in my understanding and opinion, about when it, when it comes to the flavor of the actual vegetable. Um, and that has to do with how it's grown and the fertilizer and how much the soil has been stripped and, sure. you know, all that stuff. But again, you know, if you are doing your best to provide for your family and you're doing your best to try to have healthier options, I promise you a packaged meal is not going to be as healthy as uh, a, uh, a home cooked meal. Absolutely. Um, no matter what. It's just time is <laughs> I, money I just, too. You can't, you, can't sell, you can't sell me on that. But also um, one of the first things that you'd mentioned um, about uh, kids sitting around uh, the family and having dinner together and putting that effort in. And of course, in, in America, there's a lot of families where both parents need to work. I grew up in one of those, um, those households. But when it came to mealtime, multiple times out of the week, not always, but multiple times out of the week, we did have to sit at the table together and have a conversation and we would, we would talk. And I think that that also, um, creates uh, a, a good feeling around yes. a bond and a good feeling around about uh, around food and eating together um and just an awareness that popping something from the freezer into the microwave and serving up on a table mm -hmm. just doesn't it it's doesn't just a good catch-up time for mental health period and i think that's a great point but really quickly wow. back to the ethnic markets i myself shop in koreatown all the time i love hk market <laughs> the mm -hmm. produce is absolutely monstrous and i love the fuji apples from hk market i am telling you mm -hmm. they are the size of a bowling ball and they are <laughs> so sometimes you get a big piece of produce and it just doesn't is not as juicy or flavorful these are the best fuji apples and i discriminate i only eat fuji <laughs> and or braeburn and or pink lady i want those three only definitely fuji and it's just it's right. gorgeous and i found the prices to be much cheaper and i buy most of my produce at hk market in fact which is just it's it's interesting and it's such a um I, and there, I love all the samples that are going on except for except for right now but before we wrap up um i would just i i really encourage everybody to to watch and and again go back to that um halloween episode which is so fun for the fall where where do you see this channel going and i know that one of your goals is is the Asian sauces. How about anything else or anything we can watch for? Um, I think coming up as my, uh, I guess, my cooking, my home cooking habits have changed because of my, my keto lifestyle. Um, I'm, I have successfully recreated some of the dishes that I have shown on my channel. Um, for my keto, uh, for that, that, that's friendly to my keto diet. And then also some, and I'm kind of reinventing what it is that, um, I feel that I can have, because I remember when I really started uh, becoming strict on a keto diet, I'm like, well, it's salmon and broccoli again <laughs> tonight <laughs> and, and having the same repetitive meal often I feel sometimes gets boring. And I just started uh, looking into more ingredients and um, sea kelp noodles and- Oh, and, that, those are so uh, delicious. Yeah, I really, really great. Those. And and using monk fruit uh, as a monk fruit sweetener as opposed to sugar or agave, which is what I've um, recommended before on the show. And um, just, you know, different kinds of ingredients, which will create a very similar and taste, which I had not explored before, sure. which I'm excited to share. And um, I, I have, I, I must say, I haven't uploaded a new video in a little while, but You've I've been, been very diligent. Yeah. I've been very busy, but I've been really, well, I was very diligent in when I first started um, the show that I wanted to create a really nice library 
for viewers to watch. So even if I haven't uploaded up, up uploaded something new, and let me tell you, I produce these videos in my kitchen. My husband's an amazing help. I have a wonderful editor who helps me with some of it, and she comes and shoots. But um, it is so much work, and it's the time it takes for you to prepare a meal, it's like four times to be able to show. Especially cooking. with Asian cuisine, with all the different <laughs> mise en place preparatory plates, and you do, you do a great job. But I to in the business knowing how hard it is and you already <laughs> have a full library if someone were to go today they would have a plethora for years of great great yeah. tips and then i have two and more questions i oh, i also i people um do ask me questions and ask me about the institution I, as much as i can i always try to respond to my comments and and questions as soon as i can because if they've watched my video and they've reached out to me and asked me questions about something, and I hope I can introduce them to a really great recipe or just um, a new style of cooking, um, some new flavors, then um, I don't want them to feel like they're alone there in the dark if they have a question. So I, I really like to uh, respond to my, my fans and those who are watching my channel. Absolutely, and the fans help inspire ideas. So that's great. So two more questions for you. Number one, yeah. what, is, what, has been your, what has been your favorite indulgent snack or treat during COVID, during the quarantine? What has been your go-to? <laughs> and, and you, can, oh, and you can say shots of Patron if you want to. <laughs> um, it, it would, uh, if that's one side, that's my, be my favorite beverage, or actually, um, I, I am a huge fan of Class A as well tequila. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do love that tequila, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a New Yorker. I live in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, but I am from New York and I will always be a New Yorker. And this is not Asian at all, but it is always, always, always going to be pizza. There you go. Pizza, pizza, pizza. <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> and, uh, delicious. There's nothing like, and someone said that there's a really good New York style pizza place that went up I think in the Valley. So we, you should have to try, I'll have to find out what it is, but I met Diane in New York, by the way. So we've been friends <laughs> for years. No, we both live yes, in Los Angeles. Have. And finally, again, I want to stress that Diane is a wonderful actress. What can, you've been so busy with now that we're coming up again in the entertainment business with all these rules and everything like that, but you've done a lot of additions. You booked a national commercial. I'm so proud of you. What can we watch for? And I will all have already highlighted some of your stuff in your biography, but what can we watch for? Oh, thanks, Ann. Um, well, just to, to plug my show one more time <laughs> before I talk about my acting, I think um, the, the two converged for me because um, the, my love for entertaining and cooking and teaching and showing people um, what I know and what they can also do at home along with being playful and being creative and also being on camera, uh, which has led me more into, uh, has given me opportunities in, in hosting and, and in teaching. So this show, which was kind of like a creative outlet, but also um, a way for me to, to share myself on social media. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I have always felt weird about the selfie culture. <laughs> or the just look at me in this outfit of the day kind of culture. Same, um, same. Um, I, I thought, well, you know what, if there's something that I can really do to provide a value added aspect to other people's lives, I want to do it and I want to do it in my, my way and, um, and, and do it well. And I, I'm really, really happy with the way my show turned out um, and does turn out. And I have my hands literally on and in everything. <laughs> Um, that that's been really important for me. As far as the entertainment concern, as far as being an actress, I started as a child and it's been something that I've loved my entire life. And I've stepped away and worked in corporate or America. I've worked in a lot of different jobs and it just always comes back to it for me. So um, I can be seen in Grey's Anatomy, um, uh, the L Word Generation Q, SEAL Team, 
um, I was in an episode of the network show. Yes, Conan mm-hmm. with Anne. Yes. <laughs> um, Netflix is Hollywood, which is the Ryan Murphy show. Um, and now with uh, the new COVID rules, I'm actually shooting a commercial in my home, which has become more than one set. It's been my Hoya food and cooking set uh, of that show. And um, we shoot quite a bit in my home. So, But look uh, at your knowledge forward. of already producing a show in your home you probably impress impress these producers in, in an insane time because you already know the setup, you know the direction, you know where the camera angles are, the lighting. Already you have the setup for them and with this knowledge and all of yeah. this lens to success and to today. Thank you. It's, and I always like to encourage people to, it's not even about preparing, but just get uncomfortable and be comfortable being uncomfortable and do things outside of your your, your comfort zone and and push yourself and and it's okay to be a little stressed out and balancing too many plates because you never know when one of these uh plates that you're balancing comes back and helps you in a different way and just like you said having all of this great uh, great equipment at having the lights um knowing how to edit has really been so helpful in my my acting career as of late as the industry has completely changed in how we produce um, our auditions and our tapes and now even our own shoots for actual ad for an actual, <laughs> for an actual production company no that's wonderful it's, it's diversifying and you grow you grow in your audio comfort zone and if you fail you didn't fail you learned for the next time um, and you learn from the mistakes and like you said before in the beginning of the show you can laugh at yourself, make fun yeah. of yourself, make it fun. Don't be yes. so serious. Even though you and I are both alpha type A's, it's hard <laughs> to come down from that mindset. But I think the more you go, you just have to have to roll with it. So this is wonderful. So to remind the audience one more time, this is the Hoya Food and Cooking Channel with Diane Yang Kirk on YouTube. And her Instagram and Twitter are at Diane Yang Kirk. And then I will put all the links below, including her IMDB, so you can see her full resume. And before we leave, can I get an official Hoya from Miss from Diane Yang Kirk, please? Only if you do it with me. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Hoya! Hoya! Yeah! Woo! Okay, we're gonna try that one again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're gonna do it together. <laughs> the countdown. You do the countdown. Okay. One, two, three. Hoya! Hoya! There we go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks again, and I will talk to you soon. And that was Diane Yang Kirk, highlighting the benefits of Asian cuisine through her Hoya Healthy Organic Inspired Asian Cooking Show. Please stay tuned in next week where we uncover the power of EFT for managing stress, anxiety, trauma, and more for better mental health. We appreciate you for listening, and please subscribe and rate the show on iTunes. You can also listen on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Luminary, Tuned In, or at Believe.com. You can reach out to me for any questions or topics you'd like covered on the show at Ann McDaniels. And I'll see you next time on SoCal.